one of the things that I want to ask you about is because when you first came out, they just put you in the category of white rap. <laughs> like nobody ever asked you, nobody ever clarified, no one ever asked you how you identify, you know what I'm saying? But we know that those of us, I'm from North Minneapolis. Sean is, is famously from South Minneapolis. My condolences. Um, South wait, Minneapolis is... Wait, you're from Madison, B. <laughs> <laughs> South Minneapolis is a, a character in your music the same way that Jay-Z, that Brooklyn is a character in Jay-Z's music. Like there's no Jay-Z without Brooklyn and, and everybody knows that. And everybody else from Brooklyn is the same way. But, you know, South Minneapolis... So in South Minneapolis, it makes sense for somebody's dad to be uh, black and native and, you know what I'm saying? And to appear to be a light-skinned black man. And then for their mom to be white. And then for you to be, I mean, my children are, are your, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In South Minneapolis, that's a really, that's something that's understood. Um, but was, I wonder uh, how did you understand yourself in terms of the racial dynamic of, of life? As a kid, you just play with, the kids that you're that you're the children of your parents friends you get put into the party you play with them so that we can go over here and play with each other you know what i'm saying so you're in a room playing with your with with the kids of your parents friends and there wasn't no need to we we were all black that's how it that's how it felt that's that's the type of families my 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 friends were from and then in my family even though my father was you know r racially mixed and even you know racially ambiguous um it was it, it it was a black household as far as i could tell you know i had white friends and i seen how it was different that's very kind of you thank you <laughs> and i and i seen how it was different in in white homes you know but that's it's it's crazy to think about that because my mom is from a white home you know yeah and my father's mother is white mm -hmm. you know but just culturally because of where my father grew up the black he grew up on the people he grew up with the fact that his father was black then i grew up four blocks away from the house he grew up in and so i was and he was a teenager you know so i was playing with his teenage friends children you know it just is what that that neighborhood kind of was when I had to really kind of like, I guess, maneuver it. It wasn't until middle school when people were clicking up, you know, it wasn't until high school when it really mattered in the sense of like, you, you could see it in a, in a more, I guess, intimate sense or a more personal sense. And then, you know, a few more years of life went by and it didn't matter. We were, everybody was just broke. But once rapping became more of a element of my life, it, 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 it showed up. And that's what you're referring to. It showed up. They put me in the white rapper box. And I was offended. You know, I had a lot of defensiveness about that. I had a lot of insecurity. You know, I was, I was you could easily say I had a lot of confusion with race because I didn't have a real look at everything that was going on i've heard I was, of, I've, I've heard of something like this myself i was i was i was i was behind certain curtains that didn't give me the opportunity to even really see the things that i started to open my eyes to later in life and you know i guess there was a movie where you know i remember mc search looking at the police like how come you're not taking me away and in that scene bamboozled bamboozled yeah spike lee joint in that scene, it summed up something for me that I had never even considered to try to articulate to people or what have you. But the fact was, when the cops showed up, I was white. And that was something that, until that, you know, I always, I, I felt that in high school, but I just never knew exactly how to articulate that. And then when I seen that scene, I was like, okay. So I got to make sure when I'm, rapping i want to make sure to impress upon my audience or my fans or the people who, who care enough to listen where i come from and and what kind of experience i have had and i'm not from the streets even though i grew up 
near the streets, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't live a certain lifestyle, but however, I was connected to that lifestyle. I, I don't want you to put me in this other box because I just happen to rap the way I rap. But if you really climb inside of who I am, you're going to find out that I might not be the box that you, what I didn't realize is that the box really wasn't about me. And I didn't need to be so insecure or defensive. The box was about y'all. The box was about the audience. They put me in that box because it gave them a way to identify who the audience was. It gave them a way to generalize the audience or to explain it easily. Or it gave them a way to be lazy or maybe it was a way to be thoughtful. I'm not sure. I haven't processed all of that. But all I know is coming from a history of working in record stores, it gave it a card in the record store so that when somebody came into the record store and said, do you have atmosphere? You could point them to that section of indie rap. You're not going to say that's the white people section. That's white boy rap. Yeah. yeah. But that's that. That's it's, what that but is. It's white boy rap. That's yeah. what it is. You know, and it took a long time for me to realize the box wasn't about me. And I wish I'd have learned that earlier because I think I could have probably processed it faster, better, stronger, harder. And communicated it to people and made it, you know, made it a, a part of what my vision is and seeing it because, you know, I don't think that it necessarily helped us to do what we later really tried to do, which is break down some of those lines that were drawn between the audiences. We thought these lines were being drawn around us, but it wasn't until later with Soundset that I was like, oh man, we can put fans of future right next to fans of evidence it's okay and that's what i later in life was like i want to figure out how to break that down and, and, and like i said in the in the early 2000s i was like well, why are you making me the white boy rapper i wish i'd have seen it earlier what was really going on because then i could have spoken to it many of us were trying to speak to it we all saw that, that, that these things were happening but we just didn't have the, the proper education ourselves to really articulate it in, 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 a, in a way that we could connect with lots of different people about. This is so dope because there's, there's observations I've always had of you, and so I just walk around thinking them. But you know what I'm saying? Because we're in a different setting now, I get to actually ask you, is this what, is this what you meant by this? But one of the things that I felt like I've observed is that you know, you're, you're very well aware of who you are but for people who are going to perceive you as white, one of the things that I've always maybe projected or maybe I've observed it is like, okay, if you're, going to, if you're going to look at me as a white artist, let me behave and model what a white artist should do in terms of the way that you pay respect, in terms of the way that you carry yourself, in terms of the way that you uh, honor community, the way that you honor culture, the way that you honor people. And uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because it always kind of felt like uh, you were able to show up, like if, if, if they're going to give you, put you in the white boy card, then like, okay, I'll do that. But you had this education because of the fact that your family is black. So you understand culture, you understand how to speak to people, you understand the things to say and the things not to say. But it, it always felt to me like you were trying to do that in a way that you would like for people to see it done. Did I make that up or is that something that you really intentionally did? I Here's the thing. I think that I don't know in the process of it happening, I would have been able to go, this is what I'm doing. I think I was just doing the things that felt correct. And there was intentionality in some aspects of it, but other parts of it were still wrapped up in the, my own, you know, my own racial confusion as well as my own life confusion as a young adult with a child who's now touring and, and has suddenly received some resources or some privileges or some power in, 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 in that world. You know, like I had to feel my way through a lot, a lot of, you know, one of the things that I've learned about myself is, and, and this is kind of a left turn, but, I, but, I, but, but it's not, is love language. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is a thing that I've learned about myself. My love language is to do things for you. If, if you ask me for a favor, I do it. And that's how I show you I love you. It might that's not, why we're all here today, by the way. <laughs> I, I might not always be able to just turn to somebody and let them feel the love because that's just for some reason not how I'm put together. My, my love language is to, to help come over, help you move. Or, you know, and so oftentimes, 
even in this, my love language towards this has oftentimes been to help somebody, help maybe get them in a position to make this happen or solve something for them. If I'm going on tour, I'm going to make sure that I'm also paying some young black artists to come out and go on tour with me. Paying them more than they would make in any other situation, by the way. Well, either way, though, but just to always ensure that I am showing my love to this culture, showing my love to this space and this, uh, uh, and, and this music and showing it back, giving it back to the people who created this music. You feel me? And so my love language was to do things for you. You know what I'm saying? To, 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 you know, and, and so I do think the intentionality was there, even though I might not have been able to articulate it at the time. If we would have sat and chopped it up and talked about it, we probably would have got to it but I don't know that I was ever like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. T taking notes. You didn't write here's it in how, your journal. Here, yeah, here's. <laughs> from, from now on, I will be the model of any white. If exactly, I'm going to be a white exactly. man, I will I be a model white man. I don't know that I ever clicked and had that light bulb. But I think that, you know, subliminally and subversively, that's what was going on with me.